This video will explain you how to calculate the relativities in a given bonus manus scale when assuming a quadratic loss function. Now recall that the relativity associated with level L in the scale is denoted as RL. The meaning is that an insured who's occupying that particular level in the scale pays an amount of premium equal to L percent of the a priori premium that is determined from the a priori pricing model based on the, the observable characteristics of the policyholder. Now the calculation or the determination of the RLs, the relativities in a scale given a certain a priori classification uh, system, is the main task of the actuary. And the idea is to make those uh, RLs, the relativities, as close as possible to the risk factor theta of a policyholder that we pick at random from the portfolio. And this closeness is usually measured by the expected squared difference between theta and RL, uh, but other loss functions can be used too. So that's why we call this chapter, or we refer to this chapter as the calculation of relativities under a quadratic loss function. So predictive accuracy in, uh, is a useful measure of the efficiency of a bonus malus scale. And the idea behind this notion is as follows. A bonus malus scale is good at discriminating among the good and the bad risks, the good and the bad drivers, if the premium that those policyholders pay is close to their true premium. And according to Professor Norberg, in a paper of 1976, once the number of classes and the transition rules in a scale have been fixed, the optimal relativity RL associated with level L is determined by maximizing the asymptotic predictive accuracy. And we're going to explain how that works and what, what that means. So let us pick at random a policyholder from the portfolio. In that case, both the a priori expected claim frequency and uh, the relative risk parameter are random in that case. So let us denote with lambda, capital lambda, the random a priori expected claim frequency of this policyholder who we picked at random from the portfolio. And let us denote with theta, capital theta, the residual effect of the risk factors not included in the a priori rating system. So that is my residual heterogeneity or my residual randomness uh, uh, that comes on top of the um, a priori risk classification. It, it has the same meaning as the random risk parameter that we introduced in the credibility theory framework. So the actual unknown annual expected claim frequency of this policyholder would then be the product of lambda and theta. But because the random effect uh, theta uh, represents residual effects of hidden covariance, the random variables lambda and theta may reasonably be assumed to be mutually independent. So that's what we're going to assume in the rest of the video. Let us denote with wk the weight of risk class k with annual claim frequency lambda k. That is the probability that lambda, the random variable expressing the a priori uh, expected claim frequency, the probability that lambda equals lambda k is the w k. And one can find the lambda case and the w case from the a priori price list for every tariff cell in the resulting a priori tariff system, a lambda k results, and then the wk will be the fraction of the total exposure in the portfolio that belongs to this particular tariffication cell. So once you have the a priori pricing uh, model determined with a, with a GLM or a claim frequency GLM uh, or Poisson GLM, for instance, then you will be able to extract the lambda case and the w case. Let the random variable L be the level occupied by the randomly selected policyholder once the steady state 
of the bonus malus scale has been reached. So what we want to do is we want to derive the probability distribution of L. And here are the steps we need to take in order to find this distribution. Well, first, we're going to apply the law of total probability. Huh? So we want to know what is the probability that L, the level occupied by our randomly picked policyholder, that that level is equal to L. So we're first going to do the law of total probability, and we're going to condition on theta. Uh, we, condition the, we, we consider the conditional probability of L given theta. We multiply with the density of theta, evaluate it in theta, and we integrate over all possible values that theta can take. So that's the law of total probability at work. Now, in the next step, we, we again apply the law of total probability, but now we condition on the a priori tariff lambda. And we multiply uh, this, this conditional probability that we see printed in green here. We multiply that with the probability that lambda equals lambda k, and we sum over all possible values that the lambda k can be. And so we sum over all possible tariff cells indicated here with k. Now the expression in magenta reduces to the wk. That's the probability that lambda is equal to lambda k. The expression printed in green, that um, we can get that, that green probability by using our knowledge of the steady state distribution of the BM scale. Because by conditioning on lambda and on theta, we fully identified our policyholder. So we fully identified his expected annual claim frequency. And therefore, we can use the stationary distribution, pi L, evaluated in lambda k times um, theta. So in the steady state distribution, the probability that L equals a certain level L is the proportion of policyholders that occupies level L in the steady state distribution. And you find here a workable expression to get these probabilities. Now, the goal in this video is to derive a recipe to calculate the relativities at L for a given BM scale. And here, too, you will minimize the expected squared difference between the true relative premium theta and the relative premium RL that is applicable to this policyholder in our bonus malus scale. And here, L is the level occupied by a randomly selected policyholder once the steady state in the BM scale has been reached. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from the expression of the square difference between theta and L. And we're going to condition on L taking the value small l. We're going to multiply with the probability that L equals L, and we're going to sum over all possible values that L can take. We then put focus on this expected value of this squared difference. The random variable in the expected value over here is theta. It is a positive and continuous random variable. So we will have to work with the density of theta conditional on L being equal to small l. So that's the expression that we retrieve over here if we work out this um, expected uh, squared uh, difference. So we're going to take the integral over all possible theta values of the squared difference between theta and L. And we multiply with the conditional density of theta, given L is equal to L. We evaluate this conditional density in theta. Now, the product of this conditional density and the probability that L equals L, so the, both concepts printed in blue, that product can be rewritten by working with conditional probabilities and conditional densities. And the expression in blue results. So it's up to you to verify that this um, expression actually, or this equality, holds true. In a final step, we then rewrite the density of theta, evaluated in theta, d theta, as the derivative of the CDF of theta, evaluated in theta. And next to this, we condition one small, we condition on lambda, 
when calculating the conditional probability for inputs in blue. So we, are, we multiply hmm, with the probability that lambda equals lambda k, and we sum over all possible values that lambda k can take. This leads to a, a workable expression at the bottom of the sheet for our expected square difference between the true relative premium theta and the relative premium RL that is applicable to our randomly picked policy holder. Now, of course, we want to work with this. We want to know which relativities RL minimize this squared difference. And to find this, there are uh, two, two ways, that two, two routes that you can take. So you can either take the derivative with respect to RL, the expression on the previous sheet, or you can use our result from mathematical statistics, which we derived in the chapter on credibility theory. So that is the estimator for theta that results in minimum mean squared error is the conditional expectation of theta given the level L occupied in the steady state uh, distribution. Yeah. So it is our goal to calculate this conditional uh, expectation, yeah, the conditional the expected value of theta given L equals L. And to work with this conditional expectation, we're going to apply the tower rule or the law of total expectation. And the reason is that we need this extra conditioning in order to be able to have all the ingredients, all the building blocks that we need to work with the steady state distribution of our BM scale. So in order to calculate the conditional expectation of theta given L equals L, we apply the tower rule and we take the expected value over lambda um, and we condition on this uh, random variable lambda. Working out the expected value over lambda, we're going to condition on lambda taking the value lambda k. We multiply with the probability that lambda equals lambda k, given L is L, and we're going to sum over all possible values that lambda can take. So this operation, and the, the, the expected value over lambda, which is printed here in magenta, is then worked out, uh, is then made explicit on the next line uh, with the explicit, um, uh, where we work out this, this, this conditional expectation. Okay. Now, in the next step, we're going to implement uh, two things. First, we rewrite the conditional probability of lambda being equal to lambda k, given LSL, and that becomes the joint probability. Um, that becomes the uh, joint probability of lambda being equal to lambda k and L being equal to L, divided by the marginal probability that L equals L. So that's the expression that we see at the very right-hand side of our expression. This um, second, we're going to focus on the conditional probability, uh, sorry, on the conditional expectation of theta, given L is L and lambda uh, equal to lambda k. So that is an expected value of theta. So we're going to work with uh, theta times the conditional density of theta, given L is L and given lambda is lambda k. We integrate over all possible values of theta. Now, in the expression on the sheet, you can see that we manipulated the expression for the conditional density of theta given L and given lambda. And that is demonstrated at the bottom of the sheet. And you should take a moment to convince yourself that these uh, manipulations actually work. So you see them appearing over here. And so that's our conditional density, which we plugged in in our um, expression for the expected value uh, of theta given L and given lambda. Now, finally, we need two extra steps. One is printed in blue, one is printed in green. In green, we re-express the distribution of L using the expression that was derived on sheet 45. And in blue, we use uh, the expression for the steady state distribution of, 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 the, of the BM scale. And we can do that now because we condition on the value of theta, we condition on the value of lambda, so our randomly picked policyholder is then fully identified. So ultimately, you find an expression for the relativities RL in a given BM scale. And to calculate these relativities, 
We need the following ingredients or building blocks. We need an a priori tariff with lambda case, with W case. Second, we need a steady state distribution pi L. And third, we need the distribution of the random risk parameter theta because we need to be able to do this integration over theta. We let, uh, on the next sheet, we let RL be the conditional expectation of the random risk variable theta given the random variable L, which expresses the level in the scale occupied by a randomly selected policyholder. Now, using the law of total expectation, we find the expected value of this RL, where the expected value is with respect to the distribution of L. Um, and we can calculate this expected value by replacing the RL with the conditional expectation of theta given L. And using the tau rule, we see that this then simplifies to the expected value of the random risk parameter theta. And that's one by assumption. That's also what the, the assumption that we discussed in the chapter on credibility theory. So financial equilibrium results once the steady state is reached and the corrections, the relativities, they're all equal to one on average. So if the insurance company, um, that's the last consideration, if the insurance company does not impose an a priori tariff, yeah, then all the lambda cases are equal to the same global overall lambda bar. Uh, all the weights are zero, uh, except the, the, the weight that is attached to this uh, overall tariff lambda bar. And so our expression reduces to the one that you see printed uh, over here. So that's the calculation of the relativities in case the company does not impose an a priori tarification plan. Now we can add some final uh, reflections on the interaction between the a priori rating system and the a posteriori ratings. And we do this by looking at the expected value of lambda given the level occupied in the steady state distribution. And recall that lambda is the a priori tariff of a randomly selected policy holder. So if this expected value is indeed increasing in the level L, then it means that the policyholder who are who is evaluated a priori as a big risk, huh? those policyholders will occupy the lower levels in the scale. That's what happens if this expected value is increasing in the level L. So put otherwise, this means that those policyholders who have been granted premium discounts a priori at policy issuance on the basis of their observable risk characteristics, well, they will also be rewarded a posteriori because they're going to occupy the lower levels in the BM scale. And conversely, the other way around, the policyholders who have been penalized at policy issuance because of their observable characteristics, those will cluster in the highest bonus malus levels and they will consequently be penalized again. And to verify whether this holds true for a given BM scale, for a given portfolio, you will calculate this conditional expectation. And this is an expectation of uh, lambda, of the random variable lambda. So we consider the values that lambda can possibly take. We multiply with the probability that lambda takes a certain value, lambda k, given L equals L and we sum over all the possible values of lambda k. We work with this conditional probability and we rewrite the conditional probability as you see in the next step on the sheets. Here we use the fact that um, wk is the probability that lambda equals lambda k. And finally, we use the expression for the probability in the denominator using the expression um, derived on page uh, 45. And for the conditional probability of L being equal to L, given lambda is uh, lambda k, we again use the law of total probability and we condition on theta, uh, the random risk parameter, in order to be able to apply this law of total probability and in order to be able to do the calculations. 
So uh, we're going to end this video with a, worked, uh, with a worked out example. And we consider once again the minus one top scale. We focus on a specific data set called Portfolio A in the book by Ting Yi and co-authors. And first of all, remember that we need a distribution for the random risk parameter uh, theta if we want to be able to calculate explicitly the relativities in the scale. And we're going to zoom here a Poisson distribution for the number of claims reported by a certain policyholder, I. And we're going to combine this Poisson distribution with a gamma distributed random effect, theta. So marginally, the Ni follows a negative binomial distribution, huh? because that's what the combination of a Poisson distribution with a gamma distributed uh, random effect or random risk parameter uh, results to. Now, calibrating this negative binomial distribution to the given data without risk classification will lead to an estimate for the parameter A um, of a value being here equal to 0 0.889. And you get a value lambda hat that's equal to 14.74%. The parameter A, that's the parameter used in the gamma distribution for the random risk parameter, and where we assume a gamma distribution with parameters A and A, such that the random risk parameter has mean equal to 1. Now, as a next step, you can also um, implement or, or fit a negative binomial regression model, which does include risk classification based on a priori measurable uh, risk factors. And the value of um, the parameter A hat is then 1.065. The resulting lambda case and the corresponding W case are listed in the book of Tingyi and co-authors. So now you have all the uh, building blocks available to calculate the relativities without and with a priori rating. And these are printed in columns three and four in the table. The steady state distribution can also be calculated. It's printed in the second column of the table. And finally, the last column puts focus on the interaction between the a priori, uh, a priori and the a posteriori um, term. So what we see is that once the steady state has been reached, the majority of the policy uh, of the policyholders, uh, in this case, 58.5%, uh, occupy uh, level zero and enjoy the maximum discount. The remaining 41.5% of the uh, portfolio of the policyholders are distributed over levels one to five in the scale, with about 13% being in level five. Um, concerning the relativities, the minimum percentage of 54.7% uh, uh, when the a priori rate making is not incorporated, that becomes 61.2% when the relativities are adapted to the a priori risk classification. And similarly, the relativity attached to the highest level is 197.3% without a priori rating, and it reduces, it softens to 181.2% when a priori rating is included. So what you see is that the severity of the corrections, the severity of the relativities, is weaker once the a priori rating is taken into account in the de determination of our relativities. And the last column here in the table indicates the extent to which the a priori and the a posteriori rate makings interact. The numbers in the column, they are computed using our expression derived uh, before. And we see that the average a priori expected claim frequency clearly increases here with the level that is occupied by the uh, policy uh, holder. 